everyone and welcome to the English Link podcast with me, Elle. Remember, if you want to study this video as a lesson on Link, the link will be in the description every time. Today, I am joined again by Link member, Link team member, Eric. Eric, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, I wanted to chat with you again because the first time we chatted for this podcast, we talked about Japan. Of course, we both lived there. You lived there for two years and I lived there for three uh, different places. You were in Tokyo. I was in the northeast of Japan and we could have talked for a lot longer. Uh, I think we capped it at half an hour in that episode. And so I thought it'd be fun to chat again, share our experiences and give any advice for anyone who's interested in Japan, Japanese, living there, visiting. So uh, first though, I want to say Happy New Year. And uh, I see that you have a very ambitious and inspiring Japanese language learning goal for 2021. Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, this is the year I make a breakthrough, I guess you could say. Um, no, but I just want to continue reading. But um, yeah, I think last year I kind of went up a level, you could say. So now I'm reading more. And this year I want to read even more. So I kind of uh, noticed the more I became uh, comfortable in reading Japanese, the more I want to read Japanese. Um, so this year, 10,000 words a week is my goal. And that's probably... From my experience, that's about one to two hours a day for reading. Um, wow. Generally speaking, to put it into context, like an NHK Easy News article, uh, those one of those is probably 150 words. So that would be reading about uh, maybe eight or nine of those articles a day. Or in some other cases, depending on what book I'm reading, it's going to be like one chapter. Uh, so that's kind of like my... Uh, goal I'm, and I'm expecting to read articles novels and all this stuff so yeah 10,000 words by the end of this uh, year I can speak Japanese in a maybe in, a, <laughs> in one of these upcoming videos I don't know we'll see oh amazing <laughs> yeah wow that is very cool very inspiring I need to get on it with my French study that's for sure <laughs> um so you you mentioned novels I'm just interested do you have any so you have the NHK articles that you know for sure you want to read over the year are there any goals in terms of novels or other uh content well um i actually have this book let me see okay so i have some stuff here okay yeah. so i went to the library so i got this i got some movies i got this one called ramen shop um okay. it's in japanese i find i really want to get to the level where i can actually comprehend movies youtubers mm -hmm. and podcasters who are probably around the intermediate stage are okay because they know they have an audience such as myself so they speak slower movies are a little bit more difficult right now um so i want to kind of get good at that um i think that's less less about reading but a lot of more about listening and watching dramas um right. i found this book too um that i thought was hilarious it's called uh, making out in japanese okay <laughs> so I this is an awesome book <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's just amazing. But uh, it's actually for so like surprisingly, it helps with a lot of the everyday conversation. Um, mm -hmm. Like how does how to say things in a very natural way. So I was surprised right. how actually helpful this book is. It's not just about making out. There's like a small section <laughs> about that, but uh, there's a lot of things that I'm like, oh, that's how you say this and that, and that, and there are a lot of material that you can't find online too easily. So mm -hmm. this is another book. Um, those two I want to get through, like movies and books like that. Um, but in general, yeah, just throwing myself into the Japanese ocean and swimming into the language, <laughs> as you could say. Excellent. Well, best of luck with it. I'm sure you will update us on uh, on the forum and on the this link YouTube channel. Your progress would be interested to see that for sure. So let's talk more about Japan. I have been thinking since our last conversation about things we didn't mention, things I want to ask you, uh, things that people might find interesting who um, haven't been there or lived there. Um, one thing that came to mind was definitely earthquakes. So uh, I am from the UK originally, 
I mean, we do have earthquakes, I guess everywhere has earthquakes kind of, but I'd never felt one. There'll be slight tremors in the UK every now and then. Uh, of course, you're from, you're from Vancouver in Canada, so there are earthquakes here. Had you experienced any earthquakes in Canada before you went to Japan? And then did you experience any while you were in Japan? Oh, um, good question. Now, that's a common question I think a lot of people talk about or ask when they go to Japan. Vancouver, mm -hmm. a little bit, but not too much. Uh, Japan, it was frequent. Um, mm. Yeah, it happened. I would say it happened more times living in Japan for a couple of years than it has in my entire life in Vancouver. Small tremors and whatnot. Japan is, uh, mm. I don't know the reason why, um, but they have quite a bit of earthquakes. Fortunately, they're not anything serious for the most part. Thankfully, Tokyo is, for some reason, always uh, getting the smaller earthquakes and uh, things mm. like that. So there were a couple times where I was like, oh man, is this building going to stay up or what's, gonna, what's yeah. going on here? But for the most part, yeah, you experience it. You get used to it. But mm -hmm. I would say if you're in the countryside or in certain high risk areas it can be a little bit more scary and i don't know exactly what those areas are because every year and that's unfortunate but every year i was there there was like a natural disaster in some s small oh. town in japan so that's something you have to kind of brace yourself thankfully with technology you get kind of warned beforehand like storms and stuff like that landslides mm -hmm. so in that sense it's kind of uh, a bit safe to be uh Wherever you are, it's a, it's safe, but you just got to be prepared. Um, yeah. But yeah, no earthquakes are a thing in Japan. Mm -hmm. One of the culture Is shocks, a... a little a literal culture shock, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the uh, was there a particularly big one you recall? Um, small ones. You know what? Yeah. Not really. I, I felt like that's the rain the good. rainstorms were worse. Ah, like, uh, okay. The, yeah. the rainstorms and the typhoons. That's like, yeah, yeah. The typhoons were. Yeah were harsher in my opinion mm -hmm. like and i think mm -hmm. i think the one thing that actually caused the most trouble when i was in tokyo was uh the so i was there for almost three years like two years and like mm. just about three years but um every winter there's like one or two days of snow it only snowed once or twice a year but every time mm -hmm. it snowed it shut down the city and that i think caused the most mm -hmm. havoc that uh, shut down trains, people couldn't get home. I was fortunate enough, uh, enough I got home early on one of those days. Um, it was a pain to walk through the snow. It snowed quite a bit in Tokyo and I had friends who didn't get home. It took them like five hours to get home instead of 20 minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it was wow. the snow days. Watch out for those. And I saw cars and people can't drive. Like in, in Japan, I think they're not used to these snow days. So the, you see the guys and the, well, whoever's driving the cars, they're just spinning. Because none of them have snow tires. No, so that, and the cars yeah. are tiny in Japan too. <laughs> yeah. So most, for the most part, they're like these little boxes. I, I Did you drive in Japan? No, just a bike, just like a bicycle, but nothing, no car, mm. uh, nothing like, no. Like that. I had to drive for six months, I think. I, my first school contract, I, I was in the middle of nowhere in like a small town and I worked in a high school in the town across the way and I had, so I needed a car and I drove a Suzuki wagon. Oh, nice. Place. And uh, it was really cute, but it, it was literally like a box and not a very powerful engine mm. and i was in the northeast like i said so there was snow there was lots of snow uh when it snowed and um that was quite scary i remember yeah it took uh, a long time to get to school a couple of times had some kind of hairy <laughs> experiences <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> ice but uh yeah that's surprise. i guess it didn't really surprise me too much the size of the vehicles in uh in Japan, especially since now I live in North America and in Canada, they're huge trucks. They're like mm -hmm. buses and yeah, there's little dinky cars in, in Japan. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's uh, especially in Tokyo where everything's so small and compact, it's a bit more convenient to have those uh, boxes. I call them little boxes. <laughs> boxes with yeah. wheels. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. So you mentioned there with um, the natural disasters, the, the warning system. I found that quite, it was 
uh, helpful and also really stressful. I was up in the northeast of Japan when the big um, tsunami and earthquake happened. And I remember、mm. the sound. Did you have the app on your phone? The sound for, you know, earthquake coming? Yeah,、Did、but I think、that? it might have w e n t once or twice, but it wasn't.、Okay. I don't even know why it went off. I think it was a test or something, but. Oh, okay. Or I mean, it might have been North Korea shooting missiles over Japan. Oh, that too.、So、yeah. Many... <laughs> like, I don't know what the heck was going on that day, but. Wow. <laughs> It's just like, what?、Right. <laughs> There's、yeah. that whole thing too. Yeah. <laughs> It's a crazy yeah. place. <laughs> so, yeah, anyone who goes to Japan, you got to watch out for earthquakes. Snow and missiles from North Korea. <laughs> yeah. 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 When I was there, I remember there was a, they did a test and some, one of the missiles、uh, landed in the, the sea, of, sea of Japan, Sea of China. And、um, yeah, it was, a real, it was a real concern for a while. For sure. I was, I was there. Yeah. I was going to ask、Sorry. so, how was your experience with,、um, um, I guess it was the Fukushima natural disaster that the whole world saw? Mm-hmm. So, you were、yeah. in Japan. Where were you in Japan?、Uh, where were you during that time, and how was that like handled when you, when you were there?、Um, it was, I was living in Sendai at the time,、mm-hmm. which is basically at the epicenter of the earthquake, but I was on a trip. I was in Nikko, the place with the、okay. yeah. see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil monkeys. I was actually visiting that shrine, that、uh, building, and I was about to buy a ticket to get in. And the earthquake started. And I remember the woman behind the, at the ticket desk just like, looked at her colleague and looked at me and just shut the window because <laughs> I was literally handing her my money to, to get、uh... tickets to go up and see.、Um, she didn't know what to do. And then so we stood in the middle of this clearing and there was like a 3,000 year old pagoda just creaking.、Wow. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't as it was, it was big. People were screaming and it was quite alarming. We kind of huddled. I was with my husband, my now husband, and our friend. And we just kind of huddled and looked around. That's all we could do. And then、um, the whole, whew, whole journey after that, we couldn't get back to Sendai because,、um, because everything was destroyed. And、mm. uh, not destroyed, but you know, it wasn't advised to go back up there anyway. So we stayed down, we went down to Tokyo, we went down to Hiroshima, we went to Nagoya and stayed at our company headquarters there for a bit and worked at the head office. Then we eventually got back to Sendai two weeks later and it was intense.、Um, the schools, two of the schools that I worked at, one of them, the water from the,、um, from the tsunami reached. Just across the road, but the place was just an absolute like there was stuff everywhere, everything had fallen down and it was broken.、Mm. And so,、uh, and at the other school, we my husband and I rode our bikes there, it was totally destroyed, like that everything was all over the place and broken down bits of the ceiling. And right across was where the,、um, the tsunami had reached, so we saw that, and it was just. Awful. We rode through it actually to get to the school to to help clean up the school. And it was, yeah, it was just awful, 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 sad. Just like being, like riding through a movie set.、Mm. Heartbreaking to to think about what had happened. Then Natori is the place、uh, just outside of Sendai. So,、um, yeah, it was an awful, awful time.、Um, we stayed and we helped out.、Uh, we were scrubbing oil off. Houses in, um, in I can't remember the name of the area now, just outside Sendai. There was an oil refinery, and then the, the、um, tsunami had brought in oil、mm. uh, in the water, so people's houses were just covered in sludge. Um, uh, what else did we do? Oh, and then the most alarming thing, and then I'll stop talking about it because it's, aw- it's awful. I, I don't know how people live. Honestly, with the threat of earthquakes, because it's, it's a genuinely terrifying experience.、Uh, we were there in Sendai then for the,、uh, the big aftershock, which was, I think, a five point something or six point something magnitude earthquake. Happened at 1 a.m. Oh, wow. So we were in bed, and all of a sudden, you're fast asleep, and all of a sudden, that just, of course, your, your world is shaking, shaking so violently. Um, we, all we could do is just jump out of bed and we kind of hunkered down by the side of the bed. 
I thought I was going to die. That was wow. for sure. I was like, this is it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> It's been Jeez. It's been yeah, I can imagine shorter that. than I like, thought, but there we are. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, oh. it was just terrifying. Terrifying. Did you did you leave soon after that? Were you just like, oh, I got to go home, or did you stay longer? No, we stayed for another uh, until August. So it happened in March. Oh wow! So yeah, we stayed until because so many which... foreigners left during that they time. Did. I heard, yeah. They did, yeah. A lot of our friends um, were bussed out of Sendai. Well, there was like, there was no food. They were alone, a lot of them. They were teaching and living alone. Mm. So the, I think, British Embassy, uh, American Embassy, whichever country's embassy, sent up buses to bring people down to Tokyo and then um, they flew home. Uh, I may have done that if I had been alone, but I had my husband and we were from, we are from different countries. And, um, we didn't have our passports stupidly when we were on the trip to Nico. So if we wanted to leave before going back to Sendai, we would only have been issued emergency passports for Canada and the UK. And we didn't want to do that. So, um, yeah, we stayed. And also like Sendai was our home, had been our home for a couple of years up until that point. And so we were really anxious to get back and see, what was what what had happened what it looked like and if we see if we could help in any way see our kids our students you know our fellow mm. teachers japanese and um the the foreigners uh foreigner teachers that were there so yeah wow that's crazy that's a interesting experience to have especially yeah. living abroad and um but you stuck it out um i'm that's impressive. Like that would be for me, I guess. Yeah. It depends if you're obviously in your situation. I know for me, my family would tell me to like leave right away. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. And so. there's no, there's no shame in like that. There was a bit of a, um, divide, I guess you could say, you know, the foreigners who stayed and the foreigners who just like deserted Japan. It's like, yeah, come on. There is a, an active, the Fukushima, um, nuclear plant, yeah, nobody it was knew. A whole yeah. other disturbing issue. Um, it's okay to want to to want to go if you can, you know. Um, but yeah, we we were worried about Fukushima, of course. Too, we were. <laughs> it was a while where we were trying to. We were eating foods that were good for <laughs> deflecting like nuclear radiation oh, wow. or <laughs> anything we could discover. We're like, okay, we won't eat food from Fukushima, of course, and. <laughs> Mm. Eat lots of spinach or seaweed, I think it was. Anyway, Interesting. It, was, it was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Can it was imagine. anxiety inducing time for sure. Mm. But, um, I don't know what the situation is right now with Fukushima. I mean, I know the area um, around Fukushima is still uh, not, nobody lives there, right? It's totally um, outbound. That's a good so. question. You know, there are people who still don't have homes, I think, like a lot. Mm hmm a lot yeah yeah so i don't know but you don't hear much about it i think the japanese media mm -hmm. kind of throws it under the bus meaning that they don't talk about it too much i don't know why yeah. that is but um yeah they just uh there are there are, there are lots of built like temporary housing so i don't know mm -hmm. how many people are in there but there's if you ever look on youtube and you search for a few videos people have gone through and documented uh what what's there which is not much Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen some videos of people who've gone in and, and you know, you see that animals have reclaimed it. You know, there are packs of wild exactly, dogs yeah. and deer and everything's overgrown. Yeah, I really feel for the people who, that's it, they, they left and they were never able to go back. They couldn't have known that they were never, they would never be able to return to their homes. It's, yeah, Can't it's imagine. a terrible, terrible event. It really mm -hmm. is. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's talk about something more, more positive, more happy. A little I bit social room, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder um, what your favorite trip was, because well, you lived only in Tokyo, right, when you were in Japan? Uh, yeah, only in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And did you visit anywhere outside of Tokyo that you fell in love with? There are so many amazing places to visit in Japan, um, just spoiled for choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I didn't go to too many places. The I spent time out, like I traveled around Tokyo, so Nikko, mm -hmm. 
um, Gumma, Saitama. But they're not really the most interesting places, I think. Like, Gumma, for example, is just a very small, I guess, countryside uh, city. <laughs> you could say countryside city. Um, just a very quiet place, but it does have uh, a really good onsen. Oh, um, nice. I think the name is Kusetsu. Um, I think that's how you say it. Kusetsu Onsen. And um, Nikko has a lot of valleys and mountains for hiking, which was good. Mm -hmm. Saitama, mm -hmm. <laughs> not so much. There's not much really to do there, I think. It's it's more for people to live to commute to Tokyo, but they don't want to be right. in the in the city center. Right, yeah. Um... I never have gone north. The the like the high the farthest north I've ever been is Niigata, and that's mm. on the opposite side, pretty much of Tokyo, but it's a little bit more north. It's above Nagano, yeah. and I've been to Nagano uh, mm. uh, one time. Then I also went to Osaka and Kobe. Kobe I like a lot. Right. Yes. Kobe is cool. It's like a it's like a little Vancouver because you get the the water, you get the nice yeah. scenery. Yeah, that's true, actually. And what did you think of Osaka? What did you do there? I found that place. I went during Golden Week, mm -hmm. which is a holiday in Japan for anyone who doesn't know when everyone travels in Japan. And it was so packed full of people. I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. It was tough. Mm. And I drove there. I was the driver. Who do not recommend. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what did you think of Osaka? It was uh, pretty fun. I like the people. They're more energetic. They have a bit more free time, it seems, in Tokyo. Uh, people living in Tokyo. It's a little bit more, I think, rough in terms of the scenery. Mm. Mm. You get more small shops, food, stands. People are just crowded around certain areas. Um, not as... Uh, unlike Tokyo, where it's kind of like everyone's in their own... They go in one path and everything's clean. Well, not everything's clean, but still, Osaka, I would say, isn't uh, like a Tokyo in that sense. But they, I think the people from Osaka have their own way of uh, just approaching life. It's interesting. It's cool because they're more, I feel, talkative. Um, so I found Could that tell... was interesting. Yeah. Could you tell? I know there's an Osaka Ben, right? There's... Oh, the Kansai baseball... Ben? Yeah. Oh, Kansai Ben, yeah. I couldn't, I might... My... I couldn't tell the difference um, when I went and, and listened to people talk. There, could you tell the difference? No, the I can't. I can't really tell the difference. There's a there's a few things now that I could hear, but it's for me it's difficult to pick up. Um, for sure, people who have studied the language a lot, who are fluent, they could probably tell. But for me, there's a few things. Um, just the way, especially with their verb endings, they say things okay. a little differently. Um, but at the time, no, I could not, could not tell. I just, I could tell they're from Osaka because of their personality. Just, they're more outgoing. Oh, interesting. I felt, huh. yeah. Mm. And uh, did you pick up any new hobbies or learn anything new in terms of, a, I don't know, sports or? Oh, yeah. So in Japan, um, like Mark, I played ice hockey. I played in... Oh, uh, nice. The Tokyo S League, it's called. So it's just a few teams. These are company teams. So I played for Maru Beni. And there's Dentsu. There's... Um, uh, what's the car company that I'm thinking of? There's a couple car companies. Like yeah, Mitsubishi. I think oh, Mitsubishi yeah. has a company. Um, and a few others. And we play... Uh, we play game. We played games in Higashi Fushimi, which is... On the Keio Sen, and it's 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 still in Tokyo, but it's going towards Saitama, so it's kind of on the way to Saitama. But um, that's where we played our games, and we practiced in Takadano Baba, which is where I was living. So it was great because I could walk to practice, and to go to the game was easy because it was the same. Uh, I lived in a station near a station called Shimochiai, and that's the same line, Keio Sen, so I could go to a game play a game easily. So I was, I lucked out when I moved to near Takara Baba. I wanted to play hockey and I found the practice, uh, practices were a walking distance and the games were just a train, train right away. And I would just take my stuff. <laughs> it's weird carrying your bag. Like in Canada, you drive with your gear and stuff, but mm. yeah, in Japan, I was carrying my, <laughs> my hockey equipment, with my sticks, trying not to hit people on the train. Um, 
But it was fun. I mean, I, yeah, we had a fun team. We had a mix of foreigners and Japanese. I think most teams were Japanese players. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was cool. It was awesome. It was great a way to meet new people. Like, I think that was one of the best things I did. I think if anyone goes to Japan or a different country, a hobby is a great thing to do. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I just happened to find hockey, which is not too easy to find in Japan. Um, and then we had tournaments, games, met friends. Uh, yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, it was good. And one surprising thing about that is that adult league in Vancouver, there's non it's non contact because you, you don't really need to hit just, just for fun. But in Japan, it was full on contact. So I haven't played contact in like eight oh. nine years. So it was a weird like it was like what the heck like I was like oh, okay here we go like this is I gotta I gotta keep my head up like it was just funny that that. Uh, in Japan, of all places, especially in a league that's not professional, they had contact hockey, and I thought that was interesting. It was yeah. fun. I was sore, but it was fun. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. by that, too. You'd think it would be the other way around in Canada. I know, as I spoke with Mark in a previous episode, the violence is very much a part of the game, but Japan is a more reserved and kind of... Which is interesting, yeah, because Mark culture. played professional, which is hitting, but... Mm. They're still reserved compared to, yeah, compared to North America. Even the league I was playing in, it wasn't too anything too crazy. Maybe a fight here and there. Some players would fight once in a while. But I have one story that I can share that was pretty funny. But sure. yeah, <laughs> like my players, ah, whatever, they probably won't care. I don't even know who it was. <laughs> but so in this league, um, because it's a rec league, you have to volunteer to ref a game. So they, they always pick two players from a team to ref another game. Another team's game. I didn't ref because I didn't speak Japanese and they're not going to choose me. I don't have experience refereeing too. But we had two players from our team ref. And by chance, the, like, the same night they had a party. So they went out to an izakaya and got very drunk, let's just say. Like just yeah. way too, too many drinks. And they actually ref this game. But they were... <laughs> They couldn't even skate Stop. on the ice. Right? Yeah, oh, no. so there's a big we had we had a big talking to from like the league um because apparently after you hand in the score sheet they they just drew obscene characters and like all these <laughs> cryptic messages. I wish I was at that game, it would have been funny, but uh, that was a kind of a funny oh, you story. It. Oh no. No, yeah, I wasn't playing. It was just it was two teams and two of our players who happened to ref, but I I was laughing because it was just a funny Funny story, like who goes to a game and refs and can barely skate because they drank too much sake. Uh, one of those things. Only in Japan. Good times. <laughs> and do you still play hockey now here in Vancouver? Or? Yeah, I played last year. Haven't played this year. I'm waiting nice. to... Nice. Uh, the leagues, I think, are shut down at the moment. So I don't know. Right. I don't know exactly if I'll be playing this year. We'll see. I'd like to. I'd like to just actually just practice around. But um, mm -hmm. I think that some of the facilities are closed, unfortunately. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think a lot of things are on hold for a while, but yeah, get, we'll get back into them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Eric, as usual, we could talk more and more and more about Japan. Maybe we'll do another episode. Um, but yeah, let's for sure. Call it a day there. Uh, thank you so much, pleasure as always. And yeah, really looking forward to your posts on this. So ten thousand words of reading a week throughout twenty twenty one in Japanese. Wow. Okay. Hopefully. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Again that day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll be, we'll Thanks, be speaking. Eric. One day we'll be speaking. Well, you'll be learning French. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll have, we'll get Steve to interpret to, for us. You'll speak French. I'll oh. speak Japanese. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to, one day I'll pick up the Japanese again. I mean, for sure. I, I do love it. I, when mm. I'm studying French or when I try to speak French, I come out with Japanese all the time. I, oh, I don't funny. know how Steve speaks all the languages he does. <laughs> Me neither. But yeah, it's definitely the, the language that's on my mind. It's, it's mm. at the forefront uh, in front of French, you know, mm. and, but I'm actively studying French. So mm. anyway, one day, Good luck. one day for sure. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Cheers, Eric. Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.